All right, if you haven't seen it yet, Terrence Howard just was on Joe Rogan where they discussed more or less everything under the sun, quite literally. There was one particular thing that he mentioned that really blew my mind and started inspiring a lot of new thoughts that I thought I'd share. So he said in the interview that the sun gives birth to the planet. It's not that these huge asteroids are hurtling through the universe and occasionally get caught within a sun's gravitational field and then suddenly kind of a perfect circular orbit around the sun. No, it's that the sun itself has these coronal mass ejections. Uh, parents call them like big farts that send out debris, that sprays debris everywhere around it, and that debris eventually coalesces due to the pressure conditions, which becomes a planet. And then, due to the solar winds of the sun itself, these planets, or these just this debris, get slowly pushed away from the sun at a rate of about, like he said, 0.6 inches per year, which can be measured across every solar system in the entire galaxy. I don't know if that's true, I haven't fact checked it. But even if they're all moving within a short rate of that from their own respective sun, that that tells us something. And so as these planets move away from the sun, well then suddenly what happens is that they begin to expand. According to Terence, the conditions near the sun have such high pressure. Uh, it would be like you submerging yourself or going to the very bottom of the Mariana Trench. You'd be collapsed, you'd be instantaneously compressed. And that's why we see Mercury as this small, dense iron core because it's so close to the sun that all of the sun's emissions or energy basically compress the whole damn thing to make it really tiny. Just like a human embryo that gets bigger and bigger, and then as it continues to get away from its own parent, its own mother and father, it goes through pu puberty, it has a big growth spurt. But that there are certain spaces that are called Goldilocks zones in which the conditions are ripe for elements like carbon to appear on the scene. And when carbon appears on the scene, suddenly you can have biological life forms. And then over the course of God knows how long, you actually have human entities, humanoids, that can arise from this carbon-based life form. And that happens over a series of millions, billions, trillions of years as certain planets enter their Goldilocks zones and begin to uh, harbor life. And then they pass out of that zone where you get into the Mars and Jupiter type arena, where again, they're expanding, they're getting bigger and bigger. But because of that, they're turning into these gas giants, basically. And Terrence mentioned that once you get to these gaseous giants, basically you have these big spinning tornadoes that occur that just like the sun, Earth, the moons themselves. Again, it's not like asteroids are being caught in the gravitational field of something like Jupiter or Saturn, but rather the planets themselves, once they get to that gaseous state, they begin to also emit or spit off debris. And who knows, maybe when you get to the Saturn portion of the spectrum on the distance away from the sun, maybe you naturally get a ring as well. I have no idea. And maybe when you go far enough away to the point of Pluto, the pressure conditions are such that the planet condenses back on itself. Similar to how we grow bigger, we hit puberty, we have a whole bunch of life force in us, just like the Earth, and then eventually after that we start having kids, aka moons, and then far beyond that we start to die by, again, shrinking, and then leaving the solar system all together. As above, so below. If you enjoyed that, make sure to subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for all that's to come, because this is only the tip of the iceberg, my friends. We are in for a bumpy journey. See you later.